Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Julie with Reflections Framing and Stitching. Today is Saturday. It is the 30th, I think, of July. And I am finally, finally, finally back for Chart of the Week video number 138. Welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, I think the whole country is going in to be into a terrible heat wave this coming week, but today is not too bad. So I'm going to enjoy it while I can. Not that I mind the heat. I would much rather step out the door and it be 103 than step out the door and have it be 32. So, or colder. So, um, I feel bad for those who don't have air conditioning though. I just can't, can't imagine doing those hot temperatures without air conditioning. I think the way of the world is everyone's going to need air conditioning. So, um, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go back in time a month because that's how long it's been since my last chart of the week and respond to the some of the questions and comments from last time. I want to thank you all for commenting. Um, I do appreciate it. I think there were 95 somewhere in there comments, which is awesome. Kudos to you guys. Thank you. Um, last, the last, the last video's question of the day was about regarding greeting customers, and when you say, "I'm just looking," what, what, what you mean by that? And you pretty much all assured me that what I'm doing is 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 uh, acceptable to the large majority of you. Um, so thank you for that input. I appreciate it. And um, I will continue to do that. I do have this week's question of the week is related to that one. It kind of uh, popped into my head while I was rereading the comments this morning. So um, y'all can help me with that one too. Uh, so comments from people that I wanted to address. L. Harris wanted ideas on how to feel more comfortable when going into a smaller shop. She says she's more comfortable in like a big box store because, you know, a lot of times when you come into a smaller store, you may be the only person in there and then kind of the focus is all on you. And if you're an introvert like myself and apparently uh, like she is, that can be a little intimidating. Um, I don't know that I have any, any suggestions on how to feel more comfortable except for to know that, um, you know, because I have, I have kind of the unique perspective of being the owner of the shop and going into, you know, other small stores, uh, so I know how, sh how you feel, um, but as a, as the store owner, I'm hopeful that I at least make you feel welcome and comfortable and and that you know I I try real hard not to follow people around one one gal I can't remember who it was said something about theft in you know shoplifting <clears throat> in smaller stores and it happens here things things walk away all the time I had to put the the charts that go with the models on the back wall um, I used to keep them out, but they were disappearing without being paid for. So they're now in a in a um, file cabinet up front, and you have to actually ask for the number. There's like numbers on the on the models, and so you have to ask for it. Uh, I'm sure there's other charts in this whole line over here. Ooh. Um, that disappear, it's just not as noticeable because people aren't asking for those, you know, and I'll, I was getting like phone calls from people saying, oh, do you have the chart for this? And, oh yeah, it's on the back wall and i you know, and I'd walk over there and it was gone. So, um, so, and I, so I understand a, a small shop owner maybe being a little more vigilant in watching people, but to be quite honest, maybe I shouldn't put this out there. <laughs> it's really hard. I'm just going to say it. You know, if you're going to shoplift, you're going to shoplift. But um, no matter what I say right now, it's hard when you're 
one person to watch the whole shop. Like if someone ha has me searching fabric, my back is to the shop. So, you know, I'm not keeping it. I try to just kind of sort of keep an eye on people, but not with the thought that you're going to steal from me because I do like to see the good in people rather than the bad. Um, unless you're acting real shifty and then I might watch you a little more closely. So anyway, just just know that the shop owner wants you to feel comfortable once, so she's not trying to be intimidating. She's just trying to run a business. I, that's probably not at all helpful. Um, Joy commented that she likes to be respectful and not touch the fabric when looking in a small shop, which as a shop owner, I do appreciate. I, I don't mind if people look at the fabric because sometimes I'm busy helping someone else do, you know, and I'm, and I'm not able to immediately get over there. Um, however, there's a caveat here. <laughs> however, I, my, since since the pandemic, I used to keep kind of all over the place here. I used to keep the fabric um, grouped in colors, you know, within count and within type. So all the eight is together, all the Lugana, Jobelin, you know, even weaves together and all the linens together by count. And then it was color. But then when the pandemic hit and more people were calling in and asking, do you have this fabric? Do you have this fabric? Do you have this fabric? They were looking for specific fabrics. It was harder to find. It took longer to find. So I ended up, it's still grouped among type of fabric, but now it's alphabetical by the name, the color name of the fabric. So like if you're looking for, we'll say what, what today's fabric is, is 36 count up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit, the way it is now, I can just go to the 36 counts and alphabetically go to the U's and see if I have any. So while I don't mind people looking at the fabric and even pulling fabric out, it would be helpful to a shop owner to ask if the fabric was in there in, in any particular way or to ask if you mind looking at the fabric um, so that they would have the opportunity to say, hey, go right ahead, just, um, you know, it's in there alphabetically. And I don't necessarily want them to put it back alphabetically. I would just rather them not just shove it in anywhere. I'd rather they put it on the table or, you know, I mean, if they want to take the time to put it back alphabetically, that's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to care about that. Um, and I would appreciate it, but if they don't want to, and I understand not wanting to do that, if they would just stack it on the table. So giving me, if you ask if it's in there any particular way, well, first, I suppose a lot of shop owners would want you to ask if it's okay to rummage through their fabric to begin with. Cause I know some shop owners are real snippy about that. Um, but common courtesy would maybe if you know, do you mind? And and that would give the shop owner time to say, no, feel free. It's in there alphabetically. Um, so if you don't feel like putting it back in in alphabetical order, just please set it on the table. Is usually what I tell people. I did have a um, a gal in this week, and I was busy with someone else. I didn't have the time to to really say anything to her. And my 28 count is in no particular order at the moment. So anyway, just that, just maybe a little, 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 little bit of um, helpful advice for you as a customer um, and the shop owner, because they may have a particular way they have theirs in there. So hopefully that didn't offend anyone. Um, Deb, oh, she was out, she was in Michigan on vacation and was looking at lighthouses, I think she said, 
and she ran across an antique store um, called Dead People's Stuff, which made her think of, of Connie and I and our adventures in, in uh, antiquing. And I love the name of that store, Dead People's Stuff, which I suppose is mostly true. Um, there used to be, on our way up to the sand hills, there used to be in this little podunk town, um, a store called uh, Old Stuff. And it was in a like an old um, gas station, I think is what it probably was at one point. And it looked like something out of deliverance, to be quite honest with you. And Melanie and I always talked about stopping, but I never would, and it's gone now. So um, I don't have to worry about it, but she always always makes a big deal out of how we lost our opportunity to go there because I wouldn't go before and now it's closed. So dead people stuff is good too. Kim, I want to thank you for the uh, kind words. Uh, she had mentioned that red was my color and I, my eyes are a beautiful blue and I've never had anyone say red is my color before. I've had people say that my eyes are, are beautiful blue. Um, Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate them. And then Mickey asked a question. She wanted to know um, it, that if a customer, if, if she, if they have something important, a project that they're going to bring in and they need fabric and floss, should they let the shop owner know ahead of time? Um, and I, it, I don't know that that would be helpful because we never know when people are going to be in here. So you, you could call ahead if you wanted to, but you, when you show up, it, there could be five people deep in here. So I'm not sure that it's really helpful um, or going to you know, move the process along any, because I'm not gonna pick fabric for someone. I mean, I prefer to have the floss before I pick fabric for people, um, just because you need to know what's going to show up and what's not going to show up. And I, you'd be surprised the number of people that come in and buy fabric without having their floss, which kind of blows my poor little mind because I, I would never do that. I always have to have my floss before I choose fabric. Um, but that's me, and you do you. So now, Mickey, I don't think calling the shop ahead of time is going to be uh, of, of any particular value but thanks for asking. Um, so that pretty much is the questions and comments from last time. I know you're still waiting for the results from the, the questions multiple times before. I now have three quarters of the, res the answers that I need, but um, I'm still missing some. I'm gonna pause for a minute back. I thought perhaps the mail person was out there. Um, my regular mail person decided to quit showing up for work again. There, She's hoping that they will fire her and she'll be able to collect the benefits, but they're not going to fire her. She, she did this once before. But anyway, the substitute has a tendency to not come to the businesses on Saturday. So I had to lodge a complaint with the post office. And uh, let's just say that the carrier was not real happy with me. <laughs> so, because she was marking it. I don't know if regular people can do this or if it's just a business thing, but I can send in a request for a pickup here at the shop. Like yesterday, I sent in a request because I have two packages to go out. So I sent in a request and said, hey, I got two packages. Pick, please pick them up tomorrow. And she then, then when they come and pick up, they have to scan their sheet that they, they get that tells the post office that they've been picked up. And she was scanning it, but she was not picking up. And it made me angry. So I, I don't often call and complain, but... I don't like liars, so um, so I called, and and the you know she was immediately oh I'll send someone to pick them up, which at that time 
you know, it was 10 minutes to closing. They weren't going to get here before I closed. And uh, I said, no, that's not, that's not the point. I can drop them off myself. My point is your employee is lying to you. That was my point. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I'm having a little issue on weekends. So she's just not showing up. So if there's delay in you getting your uh, package, that's probably why. All right, so shall we move on? You know, it is the last day of July. No, maybe second to last day of July. I was, I was going to do this video last Monday. However, <laughs> however, I went and I got my my cavities filled Monday. Had my teeth cleaning the, the week before, and then I'd been putting off these cavities that needed to be filled. Well, it's actually one cavity, but it was between the two teeth. Anyway, you don't need to know that. Um, I went to get them filled, and my appointment was at 10. And she said, oh, you'll just be numb over to maybe the upper right corner of your your lip. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I should still be able to talk pretty good after that. Um, and she said, oh, and, we, you know, we, it won't need to be too terribly numb because they weren't real huge cap. It wasn't a real huge cavity. It was just a little but I get food stuck up in there because of it. So it was, it was time. So anyway, um, I walked out of there and I was numb from this ear <laughs> all the way over to this ear and everything below. And my mouth was going in 20 different directions because I, I tried. I tried to make a video. You probably would have enjoyed it. I, however, would not have. The lips were going in different directions. There was just no controlling how my mouth moved. And so I said, mm, no, we're just going to, we're just going to forget about it. So anyway, um, It didn't get done. I'm hoping at the end of this video I will be able to put the results of those last those two questions that I asked um, like I said I have three quarters of the three quarters of the the information I need and I'm just waiting for the last final bit which she promised would come this weekend so I'm hoping to add that to the end of this fingers crossed. All that to say, it's the last day of July, or second to last day of July. I was planning a, a uh, Christmas in July um, chart. So even though it is almost August, we're going to go ahead and do the Christmas in July because it is still July. So the chart I chose for this week's chart of the week, but this is really a mess. <laughs> Urgh. I should start over, but I'm not going to because I got 10 minutes till the shop opens. Um, this joyous season from Plum Street Samplers. So it got a wonderful plaid red house, flowers, some cute little trees, and it says repeat the sounding joy. So I thought this would be a good one to feature today. Now it calls for 36 count Up in the Attic by Fox and Rabbit. All I have left of Up in the Attic is this little tiny piece that looks like this. So it's kind of a pinky brown. Um, obviously not big enough to do this chart, which st the stitch count on this thing is where? Where, where, where? Oh, 182 by 168. Uh, several of the colors require more than one skein, so make sure that you um, are careful when you're kitting that up that you get the, nut, the uh, appropriate, there's one, there's two two that require 
two skeins to finish on the 36 count. So if you're going to do a 32 count, um, you may even need, or 25 or 28, you may need more. I don't know, but she's recommending at least two skeins of the Arrowhead and the Cayenne. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you about this? That's about it. It's a very pretty chart, and I thought it would be nice to feature it. So this, as I said, is the called for, and I am going to, I've got, I think I have enough to get the, the colors on there. It uses a combination of Weeks and DMC. Now I will tell you that I am out of Weeks Dye Works Bart, so I did use the DMC for that. When you go to when you go to stitch it, um, you might say, "Oh, well, that looked different," or "She didn't. She was missing something." Not missing it. I just had to sub it the DMC for the bark. So that's what it would look like on the up in the attic. And the closest that I have, and I don't have a bunch of this either, I, but I do have um, prairie grass. This is 40 count prairie grass, uh, which is similar. It has some of the same color, but it also has some lighter and some green in it. So that looks like that. And I think that would be very pretty also. Now, prairie grass looks a little bit different when it's done on an Ada. This is 18 count Ada. in prairie grass. It doesn't seem to have the greenish cast to it as much because there is a slight green yellowy cast to the up in the ad or the prairie grass that that's in 40 count. This has the pinkish cast to it. So different types of fabric die differently. I'm sure you all know that. Um, just a very, very neutral 40 count mushroom would be a good choice also. I wanted to see what it would look like with maybe like a bluish since it's an outdoor scene with snow falling I thought maybe a kind of a stormy blue would look good this is 28 count Jack Frost Lugana This, one of my favorite colors, is Boston. This is 32 count Boston from Seraphim. Jack Frost was also from Seraphim. And I'm not sure, but I think maybe, maybe the, um, yeah, the prairie grass is also Seraphim. Apparently, I'm a really big Seraphim fan. <laughs> So this is Boston. Really like that. And then I wanted to see what a green would do. So this is from Color and Cotton Boardwalk. And this is a 18 count Ada. It's a light, kind of mossy green. And then I 
also have boardwalk in a 32 count linen. Pretty close in color. It's not coming off as green on my screen, so hopefully it is on yours. But I like that one too. And then, you know, we got to throw in some really dark, um, which might require, this is the roof. No, this is the basket on top of the roof. I think bark is the roof. But you might need to make a little adjustment on the roof on both of these fabrics. I think this one is fine. And this is charcoal gray, 36 count. It's just a Zweigart. It would give it that dark night kind of look. But I think the colors are very pretty on there. And last but not least is another dark fabric called Magical Gray, 36 count, also a Zweigart. A little bit different in tone. I'll hold the two of them up together here in just a minute than the other one I showed you. But I think both would work. So you can see this one has less blue than this one. So that is my fabric choices for this joyous season. I hope you uh, had fun participating in Christmas in July. If you did, I didn't stitch anything Christmas in July. Um, so I've been kind of monogamous. So uh, I did switch from, because I finished Frederick, and then I decided to pull out um, Harvest Keeper from uh, Plum Street and try and get that finished. Because it's one of my favorite Plum Street charts, and I, but I hate the fabric I'm doing it on. Um, it's 40 count uh, gray from Weeks Dye Works, but it's not the Zweigart base. It's their old base, and I, I, it's so thin and loose that I just hate it. So I've struggled with stitching on it, and I considered starting it over on something else, but that would I had I had quite a bit done, so. Okay, not quite a bit. <laughs> I had I had enough of it done that I didn't want to just trash it. Let's just put it that way. So I am working on it and trying to get that done so that I can get it uh, up on the wall. And speaking of up on the wall, I do have some frame finishes that I would like to show you. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to show I don't think I'll show it to you today, though. Because I think at the end of this, I'll probably, hopefully, maybe, if Alex comes through for me, give you the results of that, those questions that I had asked. So, and that might make the video a little bit longer. So, I'm going to not show them to you. I will do a, do a, like a regular video. I also want to remind you once again, I'm going to remind you every time just so it maybe soaks in. The shop will be closed on the 12th and 13th, which is a Friday and Saturday of August, as I am going to celebrate Connie's birthday with her, her 70th birthday. So we will probably do a video from from there. And um, that's about all I know, really. So shall we ask the question of the the week? Um, which came from reading over the comments on the last one. Um, as you know, I am a one one person shop. Melanie has been coming in and helping with some things, but she is not a stitcher. She does, doesn't cross stitch. 
She doesn't want to cross stitch. She thinks it's beautiful, but her eyes, she just says, aren't, aren't good enough to do it. And she gets frustrated very easily with it. So she's a scrapbooker, um, <clears throat> which is fine. But she, so she can't really help customers. If it's a simple thing like, you know, where is your DMC located? She can do that. But if she can't really help people, she's not familiar with designers. She's not familiar with the fabrics. Um, you know, color substitutions, probably not. Uh, so, the, the, so she's not, that being said, she's here in the shop, but she's not, She's not going to be able to help customers. So when the situation arises, I'm like, say I had a customer last weekend, I think it was last weekend, and she had what needed like 10 pieces of fabric cut. And I had three or four other people in here at the same time. And I'm always at a loss as to what to do when you know, I'm trying to get this customer taken care of. I've got other customers standing around. You know, if they, if they wander close enough to the cutting table, I'll ask if there's anything, you know, that I can help them with if they're looking like they need help. Uh, you know, if it's a question of pointing them to something, you know, or uh, do you have this chart kind of thing. My struggle is... At what point do I walk away from the customer I'm cutting the fabric for to help the customer that I'm that that maybe wants something else? Um, I also had the situation. It was not a great Saturday last Saturday. Um, I had a situation where a customer came in and there was an issue with she had a gift certificate that she said she had never been used, but it was no longer in my system, which generally means that it was used. But I had no proof that it was used because that doesn't store that information. It's just once once it's used, it, it disappears out of the system. Um, and I so I had to call in to the POS uh, support team and ask them, you know, is there any way to know whether that was actually used and when it was used? And you know, they said, no, it's deleted out of the system. But it took a while to get to that answer. And in the meantime, I had a couple that I knew needed needed something. They were kind of standing over here where I'm standing, and I could tell that they needed something. But I was on the phone with customer service. I had a line of people waiting to check out. And I was in the system, so I couldn't, I couldn't like, talk and check people out at the same time. Um, because I was in it, they had me doing things in the system. So this is long and convoluted. Um, so they walked out, the cu that customer walked out. And, and there were still other customers who you I could clearly tell needed help. Most of the time people are very understanding. But at what point, even if I was just cutting fabric, at what point do I tell the person I'm, I'm waiting on currently, you know, oh, hey, I got to go help them now. I'll be back to finish cutting your fabric. That just doesn't, to me, sound right either, but I don't like leaving people waiting. So um, if you all have any suggestions, um, that's my question this week is, because that one is stumping me. It was... It was just kind of a perfect storm last Saturday where everyone was in the store. Like, the first two hours of the day, there was nobody. And then the last two hours of the day, it was just busy, 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 busy. And I'm only one person. So I'm struggling with this one. So if you could maybe give me an idea of you know, what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I don't want anyone to walk out unhappy. I just don't. Melanie and I had a situation this week, too, where she, um, 
she was surging and I was in the back room uh, trying to work on a uh, frame and I had a podcast I was listening to not that it would have mattered it could have been dead quiet and I still wouldn't hear the door open up front but she had her back you know to the door and she was surging and you can't hear the door open so she finished surging her fabric and she was just you know doing her thing and but apparently someone had come in while she was surging and she didn't know it and and until she heard some rustling behind her and thought oh my god there's a mouse or something and it was a person and we both felt bad because we didn't know she was in the shop and no one had greeted her and um, you know I'm hoping she didn't walk out irritated because no one greeted her or I mean we did as soon as we knew she was there you know Melanie came running to me and said there's someone out front so I came you know up front and I'm like you know I apologized I didn't know you were here Melanie apologized hopefully she didn't get angry um, but it's it's a hard thing when you're the only one here and you've got more more people than just one which doesn't happen very often but when it does I would really like to know the best way to how you as a customer would like the shop owner to handle that sort of situation and I know I'm gonna get a thousand and one different responses but maybe from a thousand and one different responses I can kind of pull and figure out some way of dealing with that because um, I hate to physically walk away from the customer that I'm working with like I said if they if they wander close enough so I'm not yelling at them across the store I can ask and say you know hey or say I'll be with you as soon as I'm done here or you know that sort of thing and I do greet the people coming in the door and I usually will you know if, I, if it's really busy I, I do tell them you know if you need anything it might be a minute but okay I'm gonna quit rambling about it now so I hope you have a great weekend I've got no plans really well I do have plans for tonight um, but I have no other plans I need to clean I need to like start shoveling shoveling crap out of the basement because it's been a while since we've cleaned up the basement really good so I need to work on that um, I think we're done with the yard for now so no real plans for the weekend cleaning laundry that sort of thing Dan and I will be celebrating our 42nd anniversary on Tuesday um, I don't think we're gonna do anything it's the middle of the week so might splurge for a steak or something you know at the store and have him grill steak but man they're expensive anymore so um, so we may do that just to have a nice steak dinner at home but otherwise that's about all I know again the shop will be closed on the 12th and 13th which is a Saturday Friday and Saturday um, and hopefully after I finish this part there will be a second part attached with those uh, the answer to the all-consuming questions <laughs> so if not I'm just gonna say hey have a great weekend take care and we'll see you next time bye okay Alex came through and I have the two well the four different she made word clouds I don't know if you're familiar with that but it's kind of a cloud of, of different words so there's there's one for the likes for both ch both the samplers and the patriotics and the dislikes for the samplers or for the yeah for the samplers and the patriotics um, and I'm uh, let me just preface this by saying I'm not sure that that I chose the best the best design for the non sampler charts which is on me I'm not a researcher so um, in hindsight I wish I had chosen something other than a patriotic design but 
uh, explanation on what I was trying to figure out was if people, if stitchers such as yourself and myself choose samplers differently than ha they choose non-samplers. Um, and I'm not sure that that is represented in these word clouds, but um, we're going to go over and a couple of things stood out to me as being different, somewhat different. So we're going to go over the likes first for both, and then we'll go over the dislikes. Um, so this... This is the word cloud for the likes. And I'm gonna hold that up there for a little while so you guys can all take a look at it. And what stood out to me, and this is for the sampler, is that the most important thing that you guys mentioned was the color, followed closely by motifs, houses, and I can't read that one, alphabets. Um, those seem to be the most popular things that you look at when you're choosing a sampler. But the color, color surprised me um, on this one because I guess I didn't realize that that would be the most important thing that people mentioned was, was color on that. Um, You know, I, I figured I figured alphabets were going to be in there, motifs, um, I thought maybe verses would be a little higher, higher up, but um, not so much. I, I, for some reason, thought people liked verses on samplers, but apparently not. So that's, that's color B is the most important on a sampler. And again, I probably should have chosen a non patriotic or so specific a, a subject. That's, that's the word I'm looking for. Subject for the non sampler thing. And I, at you live and you learn. Um, but we're going to just go with this. So for the patriotic piece, the fireworks were the more important aspect. Makes sense for a patriotic one. What's that? Makes sense for a patriotic one. Well, I suppose, yes. Um, and then it was followed by motifs and the, the fact that they, it was Quaker and the barn. So those were all the different things that were mentioned liking on the patriotic. But those fireworks were definitely, so that I, I suppose you could glean from that that the content is more important. You know, the, the different motifs. Um, are important, which is kind of, kind of, also pointed out on the dislikes too. Um, so the dislikes for the this one did not surprise me a whole lot. The dislikes for the sampler definitely alphabets. People do not like the alphabets, followed very closely by the verse, especially if it's a religious verse. And um, busy, the busyness is not something I can't. Um, so people don't like how busy the one was. So the the dislikes did not did not surprise me, except for the fact that I don't didn't see the fill 
Um, cause I know I don't care for Phil a whole lot, but then, but then we've established, I don't really like any aspect of stitching except for stitching. I mean, I don't like to do alphabets. I don't like to do back stitching. I don't like to do verses. I don't like Phil. So what does that leave? I don't know. <laughs> That's, it's weird. So the dislikes on the patriotic, you people are over the truck. Absolutely, positively do not like the truck, and you also don't like the, the busyness. Words were important on this one, and the barn. Um, so again, because car is mentioned, uh, vehicles are mentioned. So a motif, motifs seem to be rather important for the patriotic because it's uh, it's mentioned both pretty pretty high up on both the likes and the dislikes. So although the word motif isn't, but you know truck, car, you know vehicles, those are all motifs. So you, one can glean from that that motifs are are pretty pretty important when you're choosing a, a non alphabet or a non sampler. So I don't know if I would classify this as a successful <laughs> uh, research project or not. I would I would guess that Alex would tell me no. Um, but I did find it interesting. The color the color on the sampler thing I did find interesting because I did not expect that to be the most important aspect of choosing a sampler. Um, But I did figure that the alphabet would be an important. Yeah, you know, some people, they always say, oh, alphabets are so easy, you know, you, they go so quickly, but I find them to be extremely boring to stitch. And if one, if a, if a chart has, you know, 1500 alphabets, I tend to ignore it. So anyway, I don't know if, if, any of this surprised you, um, or if you, if you had guessed what it was I was trying to to glean from the information, I just thought it would be interesting if to see if there's a difference in how people choose things, but you know, between samplers and any, everything else. And like I said, I probably should have chosen something other than the patriotic. Um, I thought everybody, at least in the U.S., liked patriotic designs, but I kind of, from the responses, not so much. Maybe it's just the times we're living in. So anyway, um, thank you for participating in that. I do appreciate it. Thank you for being patient. Um, I did have to throw myself on... on uh, at the mercy of Amy, Alex, um, and she's, you know, she's got a full-time job and a life, so I do appreciate your help, Alex, greatly. I couldn't have, it would have taken me much longer to do it than what you did, because she used some sort of a program thing. So, um, thank you to everyone. I'm going to call this good. It's not very coherent. I apologize for that, but, uh, you have a great rest of your weekend, and I will catch you next week. Bye.